Hey there, in this video we will learn about the physical properties of halogen containing compounds. Let's start with color and odor. Well, talking about the color, generally alkyl halides are colorless in their pure form. But when we talk about bromides and iodides, yes, they do develop color when exposed to light. Okay. Now, when we talk about the volatile halogen compounds, like these small alkyl halides, like methyl chloride, methyl bromide, they do develop some sweet smell. Talking about the boiling point, this is one of the most important physical properties. We know that boiling point depends on the polarity and the molar mass of the compound, and it also depends on the branching of the parent chain. Talking about the polarity, well, we know that as the polarity increases, the dipole-dipole attraction increases and our carbon-halogen bond is indeed polar, right? And when we talk about the molar mass, as the molar mass increases, the van der Waal forces of attraction also increases. Let's try to understand it with an example. Let's take alkyl halides, say methyl chloride, ethyl chloride and propyl chloride. What do you see? One carbon is increasing. So the molar mass is increasing. And what happens when the molar mass increases? Well, the van der Waal forces of attraction also increases. This is because larger molecules have more polarizable electron clouds leading to stronger temporary dipoles and thus stronger intermolecular attractions. And what happens when the van der Waal forces of attraction increases? That's right, the boiling point increases and that is what is depicted out here. Methyl chloride has the least boiling point and propyl chloride has the highest boiling point, right? Now let's do one thing, let's fix the alkyl chain. Let's say we take methyl chloride, methyl bromide and methyl iodide, okay? So alkyl chain has carbon equal to one. And we know that now, we have chlorine, bromine and iodine. The size is increasing, right? We know the size of iodine is maximum. Then we have bromine and the smallest one is chlorine, isn't it? So yes, since the size increases, what happens to the van der Waal forces of attraction? The van der Waal forces of attraction also increases. And what happens when the van der Waal forces of attraction increases? The boiling point increases. We can also say that the molar mass is increasing and as the molar mass increases from methyl chloride to methyl iodide, the boiling point should increase in the same order and that is what is depicted out here. Methyl chloride has the least boiling point and methyl iodide has the highest boiling point. So let's take it all together. Alkyl halide being methyl halide. So you can see methyl chloride, methyl bromide and methyl iodide. Methyl iodide has the highest boiling point. Same to same here, ethyl chloride, ethyl bromide, ethyl iodide. Ethyl iodide has the highest boiling point and ethyl chloride has the lowest boiling point. The same is applicable to propyl halide as well. But if we fix the halogen, say we fix it to chloride, okay? So methyl chloride, ethyl chloride and propyl chloride, we know that as the molar mass increases, the boiling point increases. Well, this one was simple. Now let's bring another twist to the whole concept. By fixing the carbon, let's take an alkyl halide where the carbons are equal to 4. So here we have a 1 degree alkyl bromide. Here we have a 2 degree alkyl bromide. Here we have a 3 degree alkyl bromide. But if you see, the carbons are equal to 4 in all 3 of them. What's changing? Yes, there is branching coming up here. What happens as a result of branching? Let's see the electron cloud to know what happens, okay? So here we have one bromobutane. The boiling point is 375 Kelvin. You can see the electron cloud is quite expanded. In 2-bromobutane, as the branching has increased, the boiling point has decreased. And now we can feel it's very spherical, this 2-bromo-2-methylpropane, and the boiling point has decreased further. Here is a comparison. So boiling point is maximum when the compound is well spread and minimum when the branching has increased as the surface area has decreased, right? So you can see that as the branching is increasing, the surface area is decreasing with 2-bromo-2-methylpropane having the least surface area. 
okay so we can write it like this that as the branching increases the surface area decreases and the boiling point also decreases but the volatility that is the ability of a liquid to go to the vapor state increases so the volatility increases so in nutshell we can say the boiling point is inversely proportional to branching like we saw in this case and hence the order of the boiling point is like this highest for the unbranched bromobutane and lowest for the most branched bromobutane all right now let's also talk about the boiling point of haloarene let's take a di halo compound like this check this out so we have 12 dichlorobenzene we have 13 dichlorobenzene and we have 14 dichlorobenzene interesting part is the boiling point is very similar of all three of them so we can say boiling point of isomeric di halo benzenes are nearly the same but the interesting part comes with the next physical property which is the melting point to understand let's call back our dihalobenzenes 12 dichlorobenzene 13 dichlorobenzene and 14 dichlorobenzene look at their melting points well 12 dichlorobenzene has a melting point of 256 kelvin 13 dichlorobenzene has a melting point of 249 kelvin a slightly lower melting point but 14 dichlorobenzene has quite appreciably high melting point of 323 kelvin so can we say para isomers have high melting point as compared to their ortho and meta isomers but hey why is that happening to understand let's take seven molecules of each of these and try to pack it okay so when we take 14 dichlorobenzene we can see that the seven molecules are very efficiently packed okay but when i take seven molecules of 12 dichlorobenzene you can see that the same seven molecules took larger space similarly if i take 13 dichlorobenzene the seven molecules occupied even further larger space now this is just a hypothetical way of understanding the packing okay so what does this suggest it suggests that better is the packing higher is the melting point and this is a very crucial takeaway okay so we can say that molecules with better packing have higher melting point why is that because better packing means a well ordered structure a well ordered structure means more stability so it takes more energy to disrupt this order and melt the substance okay now let's move on to the next very important physical property that is solubility we know the age old mantra that light dissolves like and we know that alkyl halides are polar right so they should be dissolved in polar solvents right so my question is do haloalkanes dissolve in organic solvents now the answer is a little tricky here haloalkanes you might think that okay should be soluble in polar solvents like water but let me tell you even though this carbon halogen bond is polar but they are only weakly polar and they lack any ability to form hydrogen bond and hence when it comes to the question that do haloalkanes dissolve in organic solvent the answer is yes but are they soluble in water the answer is no let's try to understand it in depth all right first let's take up this part where we talk about the solubility of haloalkanes in organic solvents all right see what happens is energy required to overcome the attraction between haloalkane molecules plus the energy required to overcome the interactions between the organic solvent is actually nearly the same when energy is released when new interactions are formed between the haloalkanes and the organic solvent for example if we take a haloalkane and try to dissolve it in an organic solvent like ether it will dissolve why this is because to dissolve we need to overcome the intermolecular forces holding the haloalkane molecules together and those holding the solvent molecules together to form similarly strong intermolecular attraction between the haloalkane and the ether molecule this is because the energy required to separate these molecules is almost equal to the energy released while making the new interactions between the alkyl halide and the solvent molecule but hey if we take water as a solvent 
you will see that haloalkanes do not dissolve in water because energy required to overcome the attraction between the haloalkane molecule plus the energy required to break the hydrogen bonds of water molecules is far far greater than the energy that is produced when the haloalkanes interact with water okay so water molecules are strongly attached because of we know hydrogen bonding right so to mix haloalkane with water we need to break the attraction between the haloalkane molecules and the strong hydrogen bonds in water well this needs a lot of energy but when haloalkanes try to bond with water the energy released is very very small so it's not energetically favorable and hence haloalkanes are not soluble in water all right now let's move on to the next physical property that is density so you can see that when we talk about density density can be written as mass per unit volume isn't it so what happens if we increase the mass well the density should increase what happens if we decrease the volume then also the density should increase right here is an example check we have propyl chloride propyl bromide and propyl iodide the molecular mass is increasing so if the mass is increasing the density which is mass per unit volume increases and hence propyl iodide has the highest density now if we fix the number of carbon but change the number of halogen like let's take a dichloromethane a trichloromethane and a tetrachloromethane as the number of halogens are increasing the molecular mass will increase isn't it and since the molecular mass is going to increase well the density is going to increase so we can say that bromo ido and polychloro derivatives of hydrocarbons are heavier than water and number of carbon or halogen atoms and atomic mass of the halogen whenever increases the density also increases with this we are done with all the physical properties of halogen containing compounds